thanks everybody for coming. Uh, thanks Rusty and some other panelists. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit bigger picture here on why I think CLT is important. Um, this, is, this is a let me, let me explain a little bit about who I am for those of you that don't know. My name is Russ Vaughan. Uh, worked with my family business in Colville, Washington, Vaughan Brothers Lumber with my dad, Dwayne, um, my brother, Curtis, and we've been around for over 60 years. And then my great-grandfather before that had a series of sawmills uh, back into the 20s, um, the old homestead era, making products locally for folks that had 160-acre homestead stakes. So that's where it all started, and we've evolved greatly to where we are today, and we're a uh, high production, small diameter processor of softwood lumber. And mainly do dimensional lumber. Uh, it's two by four, two by six, and two by eight. So this slide here, we all love forests. And when we think of forests, we think of places like this that provide us with all kinds of beautiful attributes, including fresh air, clean water, abundant wildlife habitat, and lots of recreational opportunities, and our ability to connect with the natural environment. But unfortunately, more and more of our forests are looking like this. Massive beetle infestations, forest fires, and it's, it's going to continue uh, this track unless we do something. Massive wildfires are burning throughout the West, and in particular the Intermountain West, from uh, Northeast Washington all the way down through to, uh, to Arizona. And there's, there's another way to, to handle this. And when these fires burn, they're burning at a level we haven't seen before because we've got overstocking levels in our forests, we've got dry conditions, we've got climate change, drought, all the things that you hear about in the, in the media. And these forests are burning so hot that it takes years for a forest to, to uh, redevelop itself there. And when a fire burns, you want to talk about carbon pollution, it releases a third of its carbon that was stored in the smoke during the fire. But the other two thirds are re released over time. And the while it rots and, and, uh, and kind of goes back to the earth. But we also lose the forest during that time, so it's no longer providing the benefits of photosynthesis. We're, it's no longer taking in carbon and cranking out oxygen. It's, it's stagnant and crank, cranking out carbon dioxide. So it's a, it's a real, real problem that we have to face. And there's a solution. This shot is actually uh, taken by one of our guys in with our drone, it's a, it's a still shot. You can see at the bottom there's piles of logs. That's post management. So we're actually leaving a higher value on the landscape after we're treating it and we're taking the product out of there. So we can have forests for long periods of time. We need to manage these things in a way that, that honors the forest in general and we, we need to collaborate with with our communities. And that's something that uh, we've been very active in. We, we're participants in the Northeast Washington Forestry Coalition, which is a bunch of local and regional environmental organizations, timber industry folks, and then other interested businesses. And we've been together now for 14 years. And the Colville is a very small national forest, the Colville National Forest, I should say. 1.1 million acres. and it got to a low point after the timber wars in the 80s and 90s to 18 million board feet. Right now that, that small forest is, and, and keep in mind that's primarily from forest thinning of small diameter material, um, is putting out about 50 million board feet annually. But our collaborative group that includes the Nature Conservancy, Conservation Northwest, 
Kettle Range Conservation Group and the Lands Council, some of which, by the way, had been part of the Zero Cut movement, have all agreed that we should be doing 80 million board feet annually. And there are forests like this throughout the West. So there's lots of opportunity. This is, I think, a vision for the future that already exists elsewhere. This is, uh, this is Hoslicker's mill in, uh, in uh, Sachsenburg, Austria. I uh, had the, uh, the pleasure of visiting that facility uh, last month. My girlfriend Alexandra and Todd Byruther, who's moderating the panel next door. And the beauty of this facility is that it's not only a sawmill, and the sawmill's been there for about 100 years, but it's also a biomass power facility. They produce pellets there. You can see there's solar panels on the roof. Uh, it's a fully integrated facility with a planer line. And then they have a, uh, a glue lamb line there as well. And then this whole process is complemented by a CLT line uh, 35 minutes away. We need to see more of this done in the United States and North America overall. So this is CLT, and a lot of people, we, we talk about it, most people in this room understand what the product is, but I will tell you that most people, even in our industry, don't really get it. So we need to keep going back to the basics so people understand what this is. It's lumber glued together, and lumber is a great product in and of itself, but adhering this together, making panels, is really the value that we are adding, not only to the product, but to our ability to treat and manage our forest lands. So here you can see some, I pulled these off the internet, but this is, these are some shots of uh, CLT panels being put up. Pre-engineered, there's very little waste. We've heard some of those things talked about already. And this is another shot in Austria. Uh, this was uh, when I visited the, the CLT plant in Austria with uh, Hoslicker, they took us to this house, and it's only uh, a few kilometers away. And it's a traditional Austrian residential structure made of CLT and Gulam beams. And to give you an idea of market, um, if you talk to anybody from these facilities, they can't help but be smiling because things are going quite well there. Um, there were a few things lost in translation, but they basically said that they're running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then I talked to the press manufacturers and they said, yeah, it's quite a problem because we have one week for maintenance the whole, whole year from Christmas to New Year's and the thing has to run. So, and there's orders for, for more of these machines because the market is really taking off and people are utilize, utilizing the product. This is an example of one of the newest structures. Um, Waugh and Thistleton out of London designed this building, and Andrew Waugh, who's been doing this for quite some time now, says we are at the beginning of the timber age. I think that's pretty exciting to think about. Uh, this building, uh, you can see they're, they're showing off the, the timber, but it's ultra modern, and we're going to see more and more of these, and I think it's going to, I think what he's saying is that this isn't going to be new for much longer. This is going to be mainstream, and it's going to happen quickly. This is at the waterfront in Chicago. Um, what I see here is this ultra-modern kiosk. It's a, um, I think it's for an architecture exhibit that they're putting this out there. But what it does is it gives us an opportunity to reach into the urban environment and tell the story of great forest management. Because a lot of those folks, they're well-meaning. I talk to people all the time in Seattle and Portland and other places that don't really have a connection with the forest. But once you're able to explain it and show what's going on and show the product, it really does a lot for talking to the people that, if they had the right information and understood it, would care about it and be our advocates. We need to do more of that so it becomes more mainstream. So this is a project designed by Tham and Vidigard in Stockholm. And I think when we're talking about carbon pollution, I think wood is the carbon solution. And if you look at a facility like this, you can really start to see the amount of wood being used in a beautiful format. And I hope to 
to see less of these drawings and more photos of facilities and buildings like this. And I think we're, we're starting to see that. And lastly, this is a shot from the overlook at the uh, Mogollon Rim in Arizona. I don't know how many people understand that Arizona has forests and looks like that, but it's quite beautiful. And that vista right there, I, I, what I wanted to show is I have a vision that we have healthy forests in the future, healthy, resilient forests that will lead us through the timber age of tomorrow. Thank you.